Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph absolute value inequalities when we have a compression or stretching. So basically, in my previous video, you know, we talked about the transformations of the parent graph and when we had x minus h, x plus k. So we're shifting the graph left to right or shifting the graph up or down. And we had a was just 1, right? Just like the parent graph. But now you can see my a is either a fraction or a whole number, it's either positive or it's negative. So we want to look at what, it, again, remind us what are, what are going to be the effects of A. Now, remember, basically, the main important thing when we're looking um, at graphing absolute value inequalities is to graph the parent graph or know exactly what the parent graph is, know what the vertex is. So our transformations, which is going to be our h and our k, remember h is the horizontal transformation, k is the vertical transformation. Basically, we, the parent graph starts with the vertex at 0, 0. So the transformations, you can just move the vertex left to right and then graph the parent graph. However, the parent graph has an A that is 1, or 1 over 1. 1 over 1 and 1 are the same, same thing. So basically, if you remember the parent graph, when we, when we were doing our transformations, I just went up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, because that's what the parent graph was. And we didn't have anything different than, um, than, A, of the parent, than A being 1. But now you can see we have different numbers for the a. So remember, if that a is negative, that's a reflection over the x-axis. And as long as you have an a, we're, we're not dealing with a b, or if, as long as your equation is in this format, your a represents your slope from your vertex to your next point. So for instance, like this one would be, instead of going up 1 over 1, it'd be up 2 over 3. Okay. This one would be down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. And remember, we're going to go to the left 2 and right 2 when you're because it goes up and over, up and over. So we're going to go in both directions. Now, again, this is only true when you have an equation basically in this format. But for this video, that's all we're going to be covering is videos that are in that format. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the graph would be. I'll go ahead and Grab some x, y coordinates here. Let me just actually do it for all of them, because I didn't do that to prepare for my video. I'm sorry about that. And if you get stuck with any of these problems, you know, or you're having trouble with the transformations, or maybe you're working on a problem that has like a, a coefficient for the x, the best thing to do is you know, to either use a table of values or a graphing utility um, to assist you. And we could definitely go through that. But if I, was, if I had like another number, inside of here, like if this was like a, a 3, I would definitely use a table of values um, to help me out. I'd find the vertex first and then use the table of values. But anyways, that's, a, uh, that's enough of that. Let's go and get into how to do it in this way, because it's really too basic. The main important thing is we need to identify the transformations. I want to go back with my red here. So my transformations is x plus 2. That's going to tell me to go to the left 2. So my parent graph has a vertex of 0, 0. Now my vertex is going to be at negative 2. Rather than having my parent graph go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1 to find the points, I'm now going to go up 2 to the right 3, 1, 2, 3, and to the left 3. So up 2 to the left 3. Um, and what you can see is when a is, is less than 1, the absolute value of it is less than 1, what that's doing is it's stretching the graph horizontally or compressing it vertically, whichever way you want to think about it. Now remember, this is y is greater than. So therefore, that means my boundary line is not going to be a part of my solution. I already did test points in my other videos, so I'm not going to go over that. So if you need help with determining all this stuff, I'll look in a previous video. Um, oh man, that's blinding. So it's going to be a dashed, uh, dashed boundary line. And then it's saying y is greater than. So that means all the y coordinates that are going to be greater than this boundary line. So all the points that are going to make this solution true are going to be above. All right, so now let's get into the next one. I have y is less than uh, negative 3 times absolute value of x plus 2. First thing I want to do is write in my transformation. So I'm going to up 2 and reflect the x-axis. So my vertex starts at 0, 0, right, for the parent graph. I'm going to move that up 2. Okay, But now notice that. Um, Again, this is reflected. So instead of going up and over, I'm now going to go down and over. And then again, my slope um, is 3 over 1. So I'm going to go from 2, which is my new vertex. I'm going to go down 3, 1, 2, 3, and then over 1 and left 1, because that's, that's a 1 there. 
So down three to the right one, down three to the left one. Okay, and again, remember that when, a, when the absolute value of a is greater than one, that's going to be horizontally compressing your graph or vertically stretching it. So this is going to be much skinnier than this one. Again, it's less than, so therefore that is going to be a dashed line. And it's for all points that are less than, um, less than the graph, so therefore it's going to be the y-coordinates that are going to be below my boundary line. All right, so over here, now we have some multiple transformations. Um, I have minus 2, so that's going to tell me to go right 2 and then up 1. I also have reflect x-axis. So multiple things going on here. So the first thing to do would be find the vertex. Well, the vertex, again, from the paragraph starts at 0, 0. So therefore, I'm going to go right 2 and then up 1. So there's my new vertex. Now my slope, again, is negative, so I know it's going to be going down. But I'm going to go, instead of going up and right 2, it's going to go down and right 2. So I'm going to go down 1 to the left 2, down 1 to the right 2. Uh, that's less than or equal to, so it's going to be a solid line. Again, the absolute value of a is a fraction, so you can see it's taking this graph kind of stretching it horizontally. It's y is less than or equal to, so I know my boundary line, or my points that are going to make this true, are going to be below. And for the last one here, I'm going to go to the right 1 and then down 4. So I go for my vertex that starts at 0, 0 from the parent graph. I go right 1 and down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Then I rewrite my um, a as a fraction. So that's going to tell me instead of going up and over 1, it's going to go up 2 and over 1. So I go up 2, over 1, up 2, over 1. Again, that's greater than or equal to, so it's going to be a solid line. Only when it's less than or greater than is going to be dashed. And then y is greater than or equal to, so that means it's going to be all the points that are above my boundary line. And again, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to use a test point, please feel free to use a test point. I don't want to tell you that you, know, you can't use one um, for these problems. I'm just trying to make the video go by a little bit sooner. But again, you want to pick a point that's not on the line. 0, 0 is usually the best case. You can see, actually, so 0, 0 won't work here. Um, but you just pick 0, 0, and then plug that in for y, and then the plug that in for x. So you have 0 is greater than 0 minus negative 1 is um, negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. So that would be 2 minus 4. 0 is greater than negative 2. That's true. 0, 0 is true. All the points above it are true. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph an absolute value equation when you have a that is not 1. <laughs> Thanks.